give back 10% plus, as you've called us to do. Well, things are kind of tight a little bit here, you know, just, just between the church and the diminished uh, membership as people have moved away more. As I said, we still continue to float because of you. Bless these offerings, Lord. Bless this ministry you've called us to do. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Please be seated. Okay, I'll do so much story. <laughs>
in his friend was asking him, do you need help with the car? And did you think Michael said yes? <laughs> Michael thought he had everything under control. And nobody could tell him nothing. So he went, he got in the car. He tried to drive, he tried to drive the car off. Try to drive the car off. So he, he put the key. He put one key into the door lock to lock the door, and he put he locked himself in. <laughs> you better be careful. You better be careful, or you'll break the key. You'll break the key to the to the lock. His friend replied. Michael quickly replied. I was I was getting ready to try it. Michael Friend said, yes. Michael Friend said, yes. OK, do your thing. Scott, Scott smelled, wait, Scott smelled something. I don't know, I don't know what to smell. <laughs> but he smelled something and tried to help. I guess he was trying to start the car. And Scott smelled something in the car. I guess it must be the, the fumes or whatever in the car. And asked Michael if he needed help, and he was like, no, I got this. Everything he had to get. So Michael pulled out the driveway, and guess what happened when he pulled out the driveway? What? Guess what happened? They bumped into someone else's car. Oh, you almost right. He bumped into a big tree. Yeah, so did you think he had an accident? Yes. Okay, let's see. He guess what? He wasn't safety because he didn't have his seatbelt on. What's the number number one rule when you get in a car? Seatbelt seat on. Seatbelt first keeps you safe. Right? So one he didn't have a seatbelt on and he turned the ignition, smoke something started smelling. And then he, whatever he did, he, re he pressed the reverse and he went and he bumped into a tree. So he did a lot of stuff wrong because why? He didn't have a manual, correct. Okay. So he was kind of surprised that the car kept going backwards and it bumped into a tree. The car was what? What did you think happened to that car? Because it hit something real hard. Did you did you think something? Did you think the car got destroyed or or he got hurt? Yeah, he did. The car was ruined, so he was mad because he don't he didn't have this brand new car that he had always wanted and dreamed about, and now he did one mistake because of not reading the manual and he ruined it. So then. Yes, all his fault. <laughs> okay. So, okay. So Scott, Scott, his friend Scott ran over to see what what was going on with him. Michael stammered because he was in a maze. He didn't, you know, it, it shocked him. So he said, "I don't know what to do." Okay. So the moral of this story is many of us go through life thinking that we have everything together. But the number one thing that we need to know is that we need to put God first in everything that we do. So because Michael learned a lesson from not reading a manual, it's the same thing God gives us a manual and it's the Bible. And the Bible is an instruction to our daily life on a closer walk with God. So as we as children and as grown adults, we should try to practice that same routine. Amen. Amen. So Amen. that's the that's the moral of this story. I hope you enjoy. Can we bow our heads for prayer? Does anybody want to pray? Not me. Not you? You want to pray?
now time for our intercessory prayer. And um, Lord knows what's on our hearts. And I would just ask as you kneel, you know, just think about this great and awesome God who loves you so deeply, far more than you can ever imagine or understand. And uh, just open your hearts there because he has given us so much. I mean, traveling mercies this week, there's food on the table, we have a place to live. Uh, we can worship here freely. There's no one uh, monitoring us with guns and threatening to take our lives today. I mean, we're, we're in a good space right now. So these are the things that we can be thankful for. So many of our brothers and sisters uh, throughout the world are really under a lot of um, distress and duress, you know, for their faith. And uh, many of them have lost their lives for the faith. And we should remember those uh, families of those people you know, who had lost their lives for the faith, because they are mourning. And it seems becoming more and more prevalent. You know, you hear about so many of them losing their lives now, and just the mass slaughter of, of Christians throughout the world. So let's keep our brothers and sisters in the, you know, in the faith, you know, keep them close and pray for them, Lord. In all these uh, countries where, uh, you know, Christianity is really going forward, uh, Mongolia is a big one. Uh, in, the, in the Sudan, you know, these various places where the gospel is really beginning to take off. And